In this lesson, you're going to learn how to make more advanced assertions in your test cases. Currently, all of our test cases make an assertion about the HTTP response status code, and that is a great place to get started. But in this lesson, we're going to explore some more advanced things we can assert after the request is complete. For example, we can assert things about the response body, and we can also peek into the database to make sure everything looks correct there based off of the operation we performed. To start, if we want to get access to the response from SuperTest, all we have to do is create a variable, so something like const response, and we are going to await the promise sitting right here. So this is going to store the response in the response variable, and for us that's useful because this contains, amongst other things, the response body. So we can take a look at the user profile we got back, as well as the authentication token, and make sure everything is what we would expect. Now, we can go ahead and do a lot of things with this information, and I want to give you just a few ideas of what you could do. So the goal in this section is to just give you some tools that are going to make it possible to test in the future. So here's a few ideas for things you could test. One, you could go ahead and try to fetch the user from the database. So right here, assert that the database was changed correctly. Now, in this case, that would mean that there is a new user with the same ID as the ID we're getting back as part of the response body. So we could go ahead and do just that. Let's create a constant user, and we will use the following, I'll await something we've used plenty of times before, user.findById. Now, the ID for this user should have come back on that response body. So that is response.body. Remember, we have user and token as the properties that come back. We want user, then dot underscore ID. So here we're trying to extract that user from the database, and then we can go ahead and assert all sorts of things. For example, I can assert that I actually do get a user back. So I'll make sure that the user variable right here is indeed what we would have expected, something like an object. Now we know that if there is no user with this ID, user is going to be null. So down below, we can use expect to make sure that it is not null. I'm going to expect that the user is not null. Now, so far, we've only ever used to be, but there's also to be null. This checks if something is null. Now, we want the exact opposite of that. I want to make sure it's not null, and there's a property we can chain on to reverse our assertion. So right here, right after we call expect before dot to be null, we will use dot not. So here, I am expecting the user not to be null. Now, we can use the expect documentation to view all of this in detail. It's the exact same place we looked at before. Over here, down below, we have expect with examples on how to cover all of this and the other assertions available to you. But this one now just confirms that when we do sign up the user, we get our 201 and that user is actually saved to the database. Now, if I go ahead and rerun the test case, I would expect that it runs successfully. Now, we're not adding any new test cases, we're just refining our existing ones. And right here, we still have 13 passing tests. Next up, let's look at how we can assert things about the response body. So that can also be useful when writing test cases, making sure that the response body matches up with what you were expecting. Right here, assertions about the response. And let's say, for example, I want to assert that the response body does contain the name for the user, Andrew. Now, you could also assert that the user in the database has that name, but doing both would probably be overkill. Let's go ahead and start using expect. So I'm going to expect. We have response.body, which contains that response body. Then we have user.name, which is where the name lives. And I could expect that to equal using to be the following, the string Andrew. Now, this is going to require us to type an expect assertion for every property we want to test. Now, if we just have to test one, this would work perfectly fine. But expect has a, another assertion we can use when we're working with objects. So let's explore that. I'm going to remove the current expect call and replace it with a new one. 
This time, we're going to expect something about the response body in general. And what we're going to do is use to match object. To match object allows us to provide an object and response.body needs to at least contain the properties we outline with the values we specified. It's okay if it has extra ones, but the ones we list out do need to match up exactly. So as an example, once again, I can assert something about the user checking that name equals Andrew. So this is identical to what we had earlier. Now, the nice thing about this solution is that if I want to assert about other properties, I can simply add them right on. For example, the email should equal Andrew at example.com. And I could also assert that the token we got back is the token stored in the database. So right here, we could take a look at how to get that done. I'm going to assert something about the token in the response, and I'll make sure that it lives on the user profile, on their tokens array. That person should only have one token, so I'll grab it by index and we'll grab the token field. So this is asserting something about the user's name, the user's email, and the token we get back. Now, once again, it might not make sense, depending on your particular test case, to test things about the response body. The goal here, though, is to give you all of the tools in case that's something you need to do. Now, we can go ahead and save our user test suite. The test case will rerun down below, and we should still have 13 passing tests, and that is exactly what we're getting. Now, as an example of one more thing you could choose to test, you could make sure that the plain text password is not stored in the database. So right here, I fetched the user from the database and I will expect something about the user password. Here, I'm going to use not once again with to be something we've used plenty of times before, and I'm going to expect the password to not be the plain text password up above. That is my pass 777 exclamation mark. So with this in place, we've tested some pretty good things related to signing up a user. We've asserted they were saved and we asserted things about the response and what's stored in the database. Now, when it comes to writing tests, it can be confusing at first to figure out what you're supposed to make assertions about. And the reason it can be confusing is because you can easily go overboard really quickly. As an example, I might say that I'm concerned that when a user signs up, all other users are actually getting deleted. That's so unlikely to happen, but I could indeed write some code in this test case to verify that never happens. Now, that's gonna make all my test cases a mile long and more useless than helpful. In this case, we wanna make sure that our assertions are grounded in what could actually go wrong. And in this case, I think we've done a really good job at that. So now what I'd like to do is talk about a couple of the other test cases that we'll be making some changes to, and that'll be your challenge for the video. So down below, we're gonna start with this one right here, should log in existing user. So this is where they provide the correct credentials and we get our 200 response back. Right here, it is your challenge to do the following. Validate the new token created when the user logs in is actually saved to the database. So right here, you're going to fetch the user from the database. You're then going to assert that the token in the response body matches up with the user's second token in the database. And finally, you'll save the test case to test your work. Now, once again, you're modifying this existing test case, not creating a new one. Now, why the second token? Well, the user we're logging in as is our test user up above. When we created them, we already created them with a token. So if they were to log in, the new token would be added onto the array being the second one. So down below, this is what I'd like you to do. Take some time to knock that out, test your work, and when you're done, come back and click play. How'd that go? Let's get to it. The first thing I'm gonna do is create a response variable. We'll start there. Then we'll actually go ahead and fetch the user from the database. So const user equals, I'll be using await with user.findById, and the ID is stored in user one ID defined earlier in this file. Now from here, we wanna go ahead and make our assertion so I can use expect, I am expecting something about the token in the response. So response.body 
dot token. And in this case, I want to make sure it matches up with the token stored on the user's profile. So I can use to be to compare the two things. And here we are looking for user dot tokens. We're trying to grab the second one. So that is the index of one followed by dot token, the property where the JWT is stored. Now with this in place, I should be able to test my work and get a, once again, 13 out of 13 passing test response down below. I can save the user test suite. It is rerunning and down below everything is passing, which is great. Now there's just one more test case. I want to take a quick moment to modify down here. We have should delete account for user. Once again, it's going to be your job to make some changes to this test case. Your goal is to validate that the user is actually removed. So you're going to try to fetch the test user from the database. And this time you're going to assert that you do indeed get null back. You should not be able to find the user because they should have been deleted. And you can use that same assertion we explored earlier in this video to check if something was null that was up above in the sign up test. And finally, you're going to go ahead and test your work. So take some time to add those changes to the test case below. When you're done, come back and click play. All right, how'd that go? Let's go ahead and kick things off once again by just getting the response. Actually, for this one, we don't need the response, so we'll leave that off right here. We'll start by fetching the user, const user equals. I'm going to use await with user dot find by ID once again. And I'm trying to find the user we had created because that's the one we had logged in as when we deleted the user profile. And right here, all we're going to do is assert that user is now null. We should not have found a match. So I'm going to expect that user equals using to be null, null. And right here, we're all done. So now we can go ahead and remove those challenge comments, save the file for the last time in this video. And right here, we should still see those 13 passing tests. And that is exactly what we're getting. So making the super test request is a great place to get started, but depending on the test case, you can take it to the next level by looking at the response or looking in the database to make sure things have changed as you expected. Now that we have some more advanced assertion techniques in our toolbox, we're going to continue on to the next lesson.